This excerpt was taken from a Full and Bloom interview with drummer Albert Bouchard. You can listen to more from this interview at fullandbloom.com. Click the link in the description. What do you remember about recording the song Don't Fear the Reaper? When we went in to record it, and I, it wasn't the first, it was like towards the end of this uh, album that we decided to do it. But uh, I remember it was a rainy day. And I always like how the rain made my drum sound for some reason. I don't know what it was. That something that made the, the tom-tom sound deeper. But it was a rainy day. I went there. I was in a good mood because it was raining. And I thought, oh, my, my sound is going to be good. And then we're, we're supposed to record Reaper this day. And we did uh, three takes. We did one take all the way through. And we're like, eh. And so then we did another take and we got to the end of the first verse and somebody made a mistake. It was probably me, made a mistake. And so we we aborted that take. We, it wasn't a complete take. And then we did the third take and I was like, that's it. That's that's the one. And I re- the reason I said that was because everything seemed to, to just be perfect. Everybody seemed to be playing well, and Alan Lanier and Donald were playing the same exact part. And th- it was like they were so tight. It's like, oh, man, this is driving the song, this this riff. And then we get to the end of the song. And it's just going on and on like that. And... All of a sudden, I just started hitting these backbeats on the crash cymbal, and we did. We finished it, and 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 I'm doing the backbeats on the crash cymbal, and I'm hearing it on the radio. I'm like, wow, I can hear this on the radio. It sounds so good. And uh, our headphone mix was brilliant. It was like I'd never heard anything so clear. It was a new studio for us. And so I get to the end of the song, and, and I mean, and it stops, and I said, that's it. And I said, well, I'm not sure if uh, if I came in too soon with those backbeats. I'm trying to come in when you finish the last lyric. And, and Don said, I was singing it in my head. You came in the exact perfect place because there was no guide vocal. We played it without a vocal. So I didn't know where I was, really. I just had this feeling that that was it. That was where it was going to happen. And you can feel the 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 tension in the song building up to that moment where, you know, that last Don't Fear the Reaper which we didn't hear, but I just I just imagined it. And so they said, well, let's do another one just in case. So we did a fourth version, and Joe was like, that's better. And I'm like, I don't think so. What do you guys think? And, and uh, Sandy is like, nah, nah. David Lucas is like, nah, nah, it's the third one. That's the one. We got it. We don't have to keep going. We got this. And Joe's like, well, there's a little mistake in the beginning. And they're like, what mistake? Don't hear a mistake. <laughs> and so it's still there. <laughs> and nobody, I defy you to find it. It's uh, it's so small. It's like he played the fifth of the chord instead of the root of the chord for a second. So that's uh, on the very, you know, before the singing comes in. But <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And so uh, that's, that is just... I, that was an amazing feeling of, of playing and all of a sudden it sounds like a, a record. As you're playing it, I don't know how many other people have that experience, but it was first for me, unforgettable. Is that typically how you guys always cut? You would cut live without uh, guide vocal? Yeah. So yeah. then I'm assuming you guys do quite a bit of pre-production? Yeah. Yeah, we did practice a lot. I mean, for Tyranny and Mutation, we had to practice. We didn't practice in a studio at all. We practiced on the road in hotel rooms and worked out all the songs in the hotel room. But for uh, Secret Treaties, we had a month off to prepare. So we practiced for a couple of weeks, and then we took a couple of weeks to make the record. So that's one of the reasons why that record is, is better than the others is because it had more preparation. We didn't have to worry about playing the old songs. We were just like focused on these 10 songs or whatever it was. The first time that we got to do that was on Secret Treaties, where we had a little bit of time. Of course, the next record was the live record and then Age and Fortune. We made sure that we had not just two weeks to practice, but we had a couple months to get it together. And would Sandy and or Murray, I mean, would either one be present for pre-production oh, yeah. or was it just a... All of them. All of them. David wow. Lucas, too. Everybody knew we had a hit. We knew it. We just had to not screw it up. Right. <laughs> Surprisingly easy to do. 
We all know how iconic the song became by itself, but I apologize for badgering you with something you've probably heard 10 million times by now. But I got to ask because... The uh, cowbell. Of course. I mean, are you the one who played the cowbell? Uh, yeah, I was. Even though, you know, Eric Eric thought that he it was him, but I, I don't even remember him being there because if he was there, he would have played it because he usually did the percussion. I'm not that great a percussionist. Eric is my much better. And David Lucas thought he did it, but it was just his idea. And uh, and he thought that he had come in when we weren't there, but that was for another song. He had kind of got the two songs mixed up. But uh, I remember exactly what happened. I'll tell it again. There was an empty track. Randy Brecker had played a trumpet part that we didn't want on this song. So uh, there was an empty track. And I said, I want to play a triangle on on the middle part where the trumpet solo was i want to play a triangle on the left and where i'll tell you how it goes it goes boom 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 ding boom 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 ding right with my with my i wanted a little extra ding on the cymbal that i hit at that moment so he said david lucas said well you can do that but i want you to play a cowbell in the verses i'm like cowbell why this isn't, you know, I mean, first you put a trumpet on it, and now you want a cowbell. I said, is the drum part not steady enough? And he goes, no, I just want to hear that bunk, that, that quarter, you know, quarter notes. Just, I want to hear more quarter note in there. I said, okay, okay, I'll give it a try. And I played it, and I'm like, David, this sounds terrible. And uh, Don Buckdarma said, yeah, David, it's not good. And so uh, he says, well, wrap it in tape. That's everybody does that. So I said, OK, I took some gaffer tape, put it around his cowbell. It was David Lucas's cowbell. And uh, I, you know, I just played the first verse and then I'm like, stop, stop. Let's let's see what this sounds like. So I they play it back for me. I'm like, nah, it's still ah, I don't get it. I said, oh, wait a minute. What if I play it with a timpani mallet, which I had in my stick bag? to do the cymbal rolls and stuff. So I take the timpani mallet out, play it. Donald says, hey, yeah, that's good, man. That sounds really good. This actually works. I said, well, let me hear it back. I hear it back. I said, okay, okay, let's do it. Then let's do the whole thing. I'm going to switch to the cowbell in the middle section. Is that okay? And David says, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you wouldn't have cowbell in there. And Bogdanama says, um, I want to play the vibra slap in there. David says, why not? Go ahead, go for it. <laughs> so, and then as we're going out, he goes, oh, you know what? I want to play a Wiro. I want to play it in just one section in between the first and second verses. I'm like, Wiro? Okay, well, let's try it. So all of that is in there. It's all in one track. We did it in one take. And uh, it's Cowbell, Triangle, Wiro, and Fiber Slap. <laughs> and if you listen, you can hear them all. I also have to ask about you seeing that for the first time. Of course, it's just immortalized through Saturday Night Live. Did you already hear about it beforehand? No, no. As a matter of fact, I, I had, had Saturday Night Live on, and they said special guest Christopher Walken. And I'm like, him again? Oh, my God. Okay. You know what? I want to watch this other program. And I turned it off. I went to another channel and watched that. And then the next day, they said, hey, did you hear... He Blue Oyster Cult was on Saturday Night Live, and of course, I'm, I wasn't in the band at that time, and I'm like, oh, they were? Oh, wow, man, why couldn't they do that when I was there? And they're like, no, no, not the real Blue Oyster Cult. They did a riff on Don't Fear the Reaper, and I'm like, what? I got to see this, and of course, they rebroadcast it like a few days later, and, uh, and I saw it, and I'm like, holy crap, this is hysterical. It's so funny, and it's, I mean, it's funny because it's almost true. You know, where David Lucas had insisted upon ha that cowbell. He had to have the cowbell. He had to have more cowbell. <laughs> I had to have less. <laughs> Did they talk to anybody about that? Or are they just, is nope. that, that's just a total. They didn't even know if it was going to make the, the show because they, it wasn't working. It wasn't working until Will Ferrell had got some girl's uh, top and he put it on big belly sticking out that put it over the top and then the rest of the guys the rest of the cast was like all cracking up you know because he looks so ridiculous right <laughs> and then walken i think was just kind of uh going off script yeah he couldn't quite remember you know what he was supposed to say but he he got the idea you know 
<laughs> it's really brilliant. Walken has this weird Long Island accent too, so it's so. Has uh, that since then just followed you around everywhere? Just yeah, get but I don't mind it. I you know we we did get on Saturday Night Live finally. <laughs> Not exactly how we wanted it, but you know what? We could have played, and even if we did, don't fear the reaper. People, you know, there's so many artists that play on that show. It's like the fact that this was a, like a classic skit. I mean, we couldn't have done it better. We couldn't have asked for a better appearance on Saturday Night Live than that. Don't 